What's going on guys? Welcome to another tutorial video. This one's going to be a real quick introduction to Amazon Web Services. Uh, just a couple things right off the top. Amazon is not paying me to do this video. There is no referral link. This is the website that you'll go to. Uh, I just think it's kind of cool because they give you a nice little free instance. Uh, there's another website called like pythonanywhere.org or .com. I think it's .com. Um, that you can do something similar to this. But the idea here is that you can run uh, a single instance for free and you could run kind of basic Python scripts from the cloud and then as time goes on you could actually buy um, some of their processing and I'll get more into that uh, in probably some future videos. But right now I'm just going to introduce you guys to this place and uh, how to get started real quick. It's very very simple but yet at the same time it's really confusing because they offer like a million services and you just you're like what the heck do I actually want right so anyway you'll get to Amazon if you don't have an account you need to sign up otherwise you can go to your account or it'll have you like log in uh, then you would just go to my account console and um, here or you can hit get started for free um, the other thing I'll mention is I, I'm sorry I can't quite remember I signed up for Amazon Web Services a really long time ago but I seem to recall there maybe being a wait for them to like give you your uh, like access because they wanted to like verify your billing information because if you exceed your you know your single instance uh, you have to pay for that so I, I honestly can't remember but I, I think you have to tie up your bank account uh, with Amazon Web Services first uh, but I might be wrong so just a warning anyway click on get started for free and wait for that once you've done that log in and I already have access to Amazon Web Services I've been here before uh, but as you can see you know you have access to, like all of these services and you're probably like well which one do I actually want here you know like in our case what we're gonna be doing is just using computing um, so it kind of makes sense that we would use Amazon Elastic Compute. The, the idea here and what kind of draws me to Amazon is that it's kind of like a place where you can do cloud computing but it's also elastic in the sense where you pay for what you use. Um, so it's really good if you have uh, varying workload basically um, which we do at least at Centex. And so, um, so anyway uh, this is what we're going to click, but again, um, my goal here in this video is just to show you guys a simple example of you know running Python. So we get here, it tells you a little bit about it. We've already said, hey, I want to do this. And AWS offers uh, 750 hours of either Linux or Windows Micro instances. Never used Windows Micro, not sure what the point of that is, but Linux, that's what we're going to be using. Uh, so we'll click on this to create a free account wait on this it's probably gonna be like you already did this but uh, anyway uh, apparently that just leads to like an infinite loop here you click this and then it leads you right back to that other page so uh, in that case hit on uh, my account here and then just go to AWS management console like once you actually you know have access uh, so click on that and you'll find yourself here which again you see like this massive list of stuff that you're like uh, I don't know which one I want in our case, we want EC2, so that's what we're going to be using. So you click on that, and you should have something similar to this. Uh, you, I don't think you'll have a key pair, and you probably would only have one in security group. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and launch the instance. Um, since we have none, let's make one. So launch, and then again, you're given like 50 options here. <laughs> and for us, you know, what, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for uh, Python. And uh, let's see, SQLite. No. Yeah, so we don't have SQLite anything on there. But this one comes with Python MySQL, which we can use with Python, so that's fine. Um, and that's really all we're looking for. So let's just go with this first one, right? But there are some that come with other stuff, you know, pre installed. But again, it's, just, it's a Linux instance. So, like, this one doesn't come with PHP pre installed. But if you want PHP, you can just install PHP. Um, just think of it as like it's a computer, right? So anyway, um, we'll accept 64-bit and we'll hit select. Let me get rid of this little search bar here. Um, and then we'll just hit, yeah, review and launch. Cause, and basically this, um, yeah, this is just a really, really tiny baby instance. So obviously your network performance isn't very good. They give you 500 megs of memory, so that's nice of them. It's like a little Raspberry Pi. 
So uh, you can configure a bunch of other stuff if you wanted, but uh, we're not going to touch that right now. You could also add storage if you wanted, but again, we're not going to touch that right now. So we're just going to launch. Um, so here it says improve your instances security. Uh, basically, it's open to the world, so you could edit the security groups, uh, and you could basically say like where you want. Um, you can add various rules and stuff to that, but we'll, we'll get back to that. Anyway, what, what happens here is, so you could say like, okay, uh, for SSH connections, here's the port, and then the source can only be, you can put in a custom IP or your own IP. Um, so that's that, but that's fine. So we're just gonna go ahead and review and launch, and launch. And now it's gonna say either select an existing key pair or create a new one. Now what this means is basically, uh, to connect via SSH, what makes SSH secure is that not only is the stuff transferred over SSH secure with uh, encryption, but also um, you can disable it, but SSH normally is going to require also that you have a key uh, that you use to, again, confirm it's you, so if just for security. So if someone, even if somebody got your SSH login information, wouldn't matter, they wouldn't have the key. Uh, but obviously they could get the key. So anyway, we'll just choose, I'm gonna choose an existing pair, I already have it, but you could also create a new pair. And when you do that, you'll just download the key. And then once you've downloaded it, like here, we'll just do this. Um, well, you'll download it and then I'll show you in a second where you'll have to put that in. Um, and then here you'll just have to say that, yeah, if you don't have that, that uh, private key file, you won't be able to log into your instance. Um, you can also proceed without a key pair. I'm um, not really sure what the defaults of the server is actually. Uh, it might even be by default. We, we can check that out in a little bit though uh, and see what the defaults are. I just want to get us started. So we're, I'm going to choose an existing key pair but you'll um, need to create a new one. So I'm going to hit launch instance and our instance is running. So now we can go uh, view instances and here it is. This is one that I terminated. This one's initializing. It'll probably be up in a little bit here. Uh, so I'll just pause and wait. It usually is like up within like a minute or something. All right, mine's up and running. By the way, it was like you know given this little like waiting thing, and I just hit refresh, and it and it was ready. So uh, just for the record, if you're still sitting there, just hit refresh. Um, so then what we can do is we can actually launch the instance. So right here, just click this little box and hit connect. And that's going to pop up here. Uh, you can either connect via your own standalone SSH client, so something like Putty, uh, Putty would work, or anything else. Yeah, it even says here, connect uh, with Putty. For us, and just to keep it simple, uh, we're going to use uh, their Java SSH client. And so it'll just come up from your browser, and you just have to allow it. And then down here is where you're going to have to say, you know, what the key name is, and then the full path to that key. Wherever that key is on your computer, that's where you want it. So if you just downloaded it and you never like moved it, it's going to be in your downloads somewhere. Mine's in my X files. Yes, that's why I called it my uh, X. Anyway, so now we can hit, um, you can save the key in your browser cache if you want. So we'll, I'm going to go ahead and just do that because I'll probably move this around. Uh, and then launch SSH client. You'll probably get something that's like, hey, you want to run this, you'll get that, and you'll probably get another little Java box. Yep, right here. Run. And you want to add this host? Yeah. And you'll probably get a couple other questions, probably. Nope, oh, that was the only one we got. Anyway, so you should have this window that looks like this, and you've got you know some information here, blah, 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 blah. And then it says right here, run sudo yum update. That's what we're going to go ahead and do. Uh, just for the record, um, you'll see this kind of stuff all the time, like sudo and nano and all this stuff. Uh, sudo is super user do. And so like this kind of allows you to do what the super user or like the root uh, account would do. And you have to have the ability to do that, but we're given it since this is like the main account here. And then yum. And this stands for... I think, I think, yellow dog updater modified or something like that. It's just whenever you update or uh, install stuff usually. And then update. So hit enter and you'll probably, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff here. It'll say like what it's going to download and how much space that's going to take. So here it's going to take 26 megs. 
Looks like we're going to download even some stuff for Python here, Crypto, Paramico, for SSH. Uh, hopefully that's just, uh, I guess it's installing some stuff for this stuff. Anyway, uh, yes. And so it's going to download that and run through a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and whenever it's done, I'll just show you guys uh, at least just how to access Python. And um, and then I'll cut off the video, and then we'll uh, proceed with some other videos uh, using Python. Generally, what I would use this for is like I, being a Linux machine. You can set up like a cron job, and that cron job can run uh, your Python files, uh, or you can just straight up just constantly run your Python files on here. But anyway, uh, you should be able to just do Python, and now you can see right here. Uh, you know, it's like the typical Python text, right? Uh, in our case, uh, we're using, I think it's 2. Yeah, 2.6.9, so we might decide to update that to 2.7. But anyway, just for kicks, we can do, you know, print hello. Um, it does hello, and then you do the typical define uh, funds, and then tab over, print hello, done and then call funds prints out hello you get the idea if anybody's been following my tutorials I never coded in uh, the prompt thing like this but yeah when you define a function you, you're gonna have to automatically do your tabs so it goes dot 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 you would tab it over type what you want and then when you're done with that function you would just double enter and it takes you out of that function and then you can call it so anyways, that's the basics of Amazon Web Services, getting set up, getting a simple instance running. It's absolutely free, so you might as well do it and toy around with it anyways. Um, you can do a lot of cool stuff with this, and it's kind of a way to uh, run your applications in the cloud and allow them to scale. And, and then eventually, you know, we can hook up Python to MySQL and uh, start running some pretty epic applications in the cloud. So. Anyway, uh, if that sounds interesting to you guys, stay tuned. And if it does sound interesting to you guys, I suggest uh, that you be prepared to shell out money uh, to continue playing with this. Because <laughs> uh, probably pretty, pretty quickly uh, you'll be charged. I'm not sure how, how much we can do with this EC2 thing uh, before it's like, hey, pay up. But we'll find out. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support of the subscriptions. And until next time.